Hello, welcome back to using the Eclipse Workbench. In the last lesson, we learned how to arrange editor sessions in the edit area of the Workbench. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to arrange views and how to use various view options. Let's start with some terminology. The fundamental elements of the Eclipse Workbench are editors and views. Editors, as you would expect, allow us to create, open, edit, and save files of various types, such as text, source code, XML, and others. A view in Eclipse typically provides a structured presentation of a file, project, or some other resource. Views often allow us to navigate within a resource or among resources, and can allow us to make changes as well. The best way to understand views is to work with them. Here we've got Eclipse open just as we left it in the previous lesson. We've already worked with one view, the Package Explorer. This view provides a structured view of our projects and allows us to navigate to the different project resources, for example, the different files in the project. Also, the Package Explorer view works with the file editors, which is how we could use it to open files. Let's look at another view. If we open the XML file, we'll double click, we can now see that we have something in the outline view. If we expand this, we see an outline of our XML file, showing the different XML elements in a tree structure. Now, let's open up the book.java file. Again, we'll double click. And the outline view changes to a different type of presentation. This displays an outline of the book.java file shown as a Java class. When we switch back to the XML file, the outline view switches. Also, notice that the outline view and the editor are linked together. If we click on a portion of the file, say here at Author, that element is highlighted over here in the outline view. It also works the other way around. For example, if we double click an element in the outline view, that element is highlighted in the XML file. If we do a bigger element, it highlights the whole thing. Also, changes made in one place are immediately reflected in the other. For example, if we go to the outline view and remove this people element, we can see it's removed here as well as over in the editor. Now we'll go back to the editor and use Control Z to undo this change and then we'll save our file. Keep our file in the original condition. Views are organized in panels called tab notebooks like we saw with editors, but with one important difference. Editors, as we saw in the last session, always occupy the center edit area of the workbench. Views normally occupy the region around the outside of the workbench. Now let's see how this works. We'll start by looking at the different view regions. If we drag the outline view onto the task list, we create a single tab notebook that now holds both views. If we drag the outline view to the top of the edit area, we move it to a region above the edit area. Similarly, we can drag it to other places. We can have it join the Package Explorer in this tab notebook. We can drag it to a position vertically just to the right of the Package Explorer notebook. We can drag it to a new panel down below the Package Explorer notebook, to this panel down here with the problems, to a new area just above that, and back to its original position. Next, let's look at two details about dragging views. To drag a single view, as we've seen, we click on the tab. If we want to move an entire tab notebook of views, we click on the area next to the tabs. For example, let's click on the bottom panel next to the tabs 
and we can drag the entire notebook to another location, say to this top area. Now a second detail to note is the difference between wedging the panel between two other panels and spanning the entire width or height of the workbench. For example, if we drag the problems group back to the lower position, the gray rectangle indicates that we're going to wedge it between the two vertical panels. If we drag it all the way to the bottom border, now the gray rectangle shows it spanning the whole workbench width. So we can control whether we want it to be the whole width of the workbench or wedged between the two vertical panels. So we can control the exact placement of each view panel. As we did with editors, we can subdivide view panels as much as we like, either vertically or horizontally. Unlike editors, views can also be detached to display in a separate window. Let's drag the outline view off the workbench. So we'll drag it over there. And now it's in its own window. We can reattach it in the same way. Just grab the tab, move it down to where we want it, and it reattaches. Views can also be minimized and maximized just like the editor area. However, note that each tab notebook has its own minimize and maximize buttons. So each view notebook operates independently. Often when working with software, we need access to more information than will fit on the screen. So one of our challenges is managing the space on the screen, or screen real estate as it's often called. Eclipse has some very handy features for this. Let's maximize the edit area and look at the view toolbars that are created. As we discussed in the previous lesson, we get toolbars called trim stacks for each group of views. The first button in each bar is the restore button, which just restores the view group. Notice that any of the view restore buttons restores all of the view groups. So if we press there, it restores them all. And similarly, if we press over here, it restores all of the view groups. That's because they were all minimized at the same time when the edit area was maximized. If we minimize one or more view groups individually, then when we restore them, they are restored individually. For example, let's minimize the two groups on the right side. So we'll minimize the task list and we'll minimize the outline. Now, when we maximize and restore the edit area, it's restored to the same state it was before we maximized, and these two groups stay minimized. And when we restore these groups, that doesn't affect any other group. They're restored individually. Next, let's look at a very cool feature of the trim stacks. With the edit area maximized, let's press the Package Explorer button on the trim stack bar. This creates a pop-up view that displays over the top of the edit area. Notice that the text underneath is hidden, so it doesn't change the size of the edit area, it just overlays the edit area. We can work with this view just like we normally would and we can toggle it on and off with this button here. But the cool thing is that it closes automatically as soon as we click anywhere on the workbench outside the view. Also, we can make the view any width we want and it doesn't affect the width of the other views in the group. So for example, we could make the Package Explorer wide, we could make the hierarchy view narrow, and now 
It remembers those widths and it doesn't affect the width of the tab notebook when it's restored. So different views can have different widths and we can use the whole workbench for editing while still having the views available with one click. This functionality is the same as the fast views that were used in earlier Eclipse versions. Fast views are still available, but you probably don't need them since we have this capability automatically for every view group. Now by default, the trim stacks are located near the location of the view group. We can move them to a different part of the trim by dragging the dotted line. So for example, if we drag this down to here, we can move it down there or anywhere else on the trim. Some editors have pop-up views available by right-clicking or by shortcut keys. If we open the book.java file and press Control o for example, we get a pop-up outline window similar to the outline view. Let's look quickly at two other features of views. If we look at the Package Explorer again, we see we have a toolbar. One of the buttons is called Collapse All. This just collapses all the trees to the original position. And we showed earlier how the outline view was linked to the editor. In many views, this is a feature that can be toggled on and off. In the Package Explorer, we have this button Link with Editor, and it defaults to Off. If we press the Link with Editor button, then the book file becomes highlighted automatically because that's the file we're editing. Many views have a drop-down menu accessed by this little triangle. Often, they let you set up filters that allow us to see only selected resources. This can be very handy when you're working on a large project with many resources. Next, let's look at the search view. First, let's restore the bottom group of views by pressing its Restore button. We can start a search by pressing the Search button on the main toolbar. When we do a search, we can do a file search which searches the text in any file. We can search for tasks or we can do a Java specific search. We'll do a file search and search for the word book. When we press the search button, the search view automatically displays. This view shows us all of the places where the word book was found in our project. Like most views, this view has a toolbar and a pull-down menu. One handy feature of some views, including the search view, is being able to pin the view. Pinning a view just means saving a snapshot of this view. Normally, if we were to now do a different search, we would reuse the same view and lose our current search results. If we press the Pin button and do a second search, the first search results are saved and the new search shows in a new search view. Let's try it. We'll do a second search. This time we'll look for the word Author. Press Search. And now we have two search views. We've got the Author search view and we've got our first search for book because it's been pinned. And if we like, we could even compare them side by side by dragging the new search to the right so we now have both search views open at the same time. We're making great progress. We've learned a lot about arranging and using views. In the next lesson, We'll learn how perspectives in Eclipse allow us to combine editors and views into predefined workbench configurations. This is the end of Lesson 2. I'm Mark Dexter saying so long for now.